Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about power and energy. In physics, both of these terms mean something quite different. They're measured in different units as well. They are, however, related to each other. To start with, we're going to be talking about electrical power. That is, talking about how the power carried in an electrical signal relates to the energy carried by that signal. And we're going to be look at, looking at how we can calculate the power of the signal with its voltage and its current. Now, as we know, energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. That's conservation of energy, right? It can only be transformed into different forms of energy or stored up as potential energy, right? If we roll a boulder up to the top of a hill, then the mechanical energy that we're doing with our muscles is converted into the potential energy of that boulder. And when we move the boulder off the hill, that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So some common forms of energy are light, sound, and of course, kinetic energy. Now, elect electrical energy is very useful because it can be transformed into different types of energy, right? And those different types of energy can be used around the house. When electricity passes through a resistor, it is transformed into heat by that resistor, right? So it's a transformation of electrical energy into heat energy. So if the current is large enough, uh, like in an incandescent light bulb, then some of the energy will even transform into light energy, although more still will be transformed into heat energy. Now, power is the rate at which, elect uh, at which energy is transformed, right? So it's a rate of energy per time. So the power of any object emitting energy is P, power, equals E over delta T. That is the energy over the change in time. Remember that here, P is a capital P. A lowercase p stands for momentum. Now we usually measure power in watts, named after this fellow here, uh, James Watt. So one watt is the same as one joule per second. Remember that power is equal to energy per second, or energy per time, which means the units should match up as well, right? So one watt is the flow of one joule per second. So we can find the electrical energy flowing through a resistor in order to find its power, right? And if we can somehow relate this energy to, for example, the current or the voltage, that will allow us to use current and voltage in order to find the power of a resistor. When a set of charged particles flow through a resistor, they produce heat, right? They transform uh, the kinetic energy of the movement of, for example, electrons into the heat energy. That is the kinetic energy of the vibration of the lattice. So the energy of an electron as it goes through a resistor changes by E, energy, equals QV, right? the electron's charge times the voltage through which it passes. So Q is the particle's charge, V is the voltage drop across the resistor. Now, what if we wanted to try and figure out the power based on this equation? Well, power is energy over time, right? So if the particle takes a time of delta T to pass through the resistor, power which equals energy over the change in time, will equal QV over the change in time, right? But hang on a moment. Q over delta T, that looks familiar. We can take this part of the equation and substitute something else for it. Can you see what? I, the current through the resistor, equals Q over the change in time. So power will equal V times I. Very simple equation. That is the amount of heat energy 
radiated by a resistor equals the voltage across it times the current through it. So the voltage drop across a resistor uh, is given by V equals IR, right? And we can combine this equation with our equation for the power uh, radiated by a resistor to find another expression that gives us the power, right? And this one won't be dependent on both V and I. If we substitute V equals IR into our equation for power, P equals VI, then we have the equation P equals I squared R, right? So now we, we depend on the current and the resistance through our resistor rather than the voltage and the current. And this means that we can find the power emitted by the resistor even when we don't know what the voltage drop across that resistor is. For example, if we have a very, very long electric wire, it's very, very difficult to measure the voltage drop across it because we can't get an enormous voltmeter uh, at each end uh, of the electric wire. What we can do is measure the current through it. And if we know the current through it and the resistance of the wire, then we can calculate the power radiated by it using this equation. Now, when a resistor transforms electrical energy into heat, it warms up, right? It gets hotter. So high temperatures will damage the resistor, which means we don't want the power through it to be extremely large. Of course, resistors with a very high surface area are able to radiate a lot of heat away from themselves quite quickly. And so if they have larger surface areas, they can generally withstand higher temperatures, right? When an object gets very, very hot, it can radiate some of that heat away into its surroundings. Now, because energy is related to power, by power equals energy over time, we can rearrange this equation energy equals power multiplied by time, right? And knowing what we do about power, we can use VI instead of P, right? So energy radiated by a resistor is the voltage across it times the current through it times the amount of time you wait. Uh, so if we take, for example, a 60 watt light bulb, uh, which has a power of 60 watts, then it will radiate 60 joules of energy every second. If we wait two seconds, then delta T will be two, so it will radiate 120 joules instead. So that's the end of the theory. We know about the difference between energy and power, and how to calculate the power radiated by a resistor. Let's go on to some questions. What units are used to measure power? Joules, volts, amps, or watts? Now, joules are used to measure energy, uh, volts are used to measure voltage, amper is used to measure current, and watts are the only one left, so these must be what are used to measure power. We use the symbol W for them. Question two. Write down three equations for power that could be used to calculate the power of a resistor in an electrical circuit. All right, so what equations do we know for power? Well, P equals VI is one of them. So if we know the voltage drop across a resistor, measured with a voltmeter, and the current through it, measured with an ammeter, we can figure out how much heat it's radiating. We know P equals I squared R, which is very useful if we know the resistance of a resistor, but we don't know the voltage of the resistor, or rather the voltage across the resistor. Remember that the voltage across the resistor is not always the same as the voltage of the power source. And finally, we could use power equals E on change in time. So power is the rate of change of energy 
if we can measure the energy over time, we can measure the power. Question 3. The potential difference across a certain resistor is 4 volts. Calculate the power it emits when a current of 0 0.0 amps flows through it. So which of those previous three equations shall we use for this? We know the voltage and we know the current. So we should use P equals VI. Multiplying these together, 4 times 0.8, we end up with 3.2 watts. Remember to use the right units. The units of power are watts. 1 amp times 1 volt equals 1 watt. Part B. How much energy does this resistor emit in 20 minutes? Now, watts is a measure of joules per second. So if we want to give an answer in joules, the SI unit for energy, we need to convert this into seconds, right? We don't want to answer in uh, watt minutes, we want to answer in watt seconds, because a watt second is the same as a joule. E equals PT. So multiplying 3.2 watts by 1,200 seconds gives us an answer of 3,840 joules, or 3.8 kilojoules. Question 4. A certain resistor radiates 20 watts when 10 volts are applied to it. What current flows through the resistor? So in this case, we need to use one of our equations for power, but rearrange it so that current is the subject of the equation. I equals P on V is, in a, is a rearrangement of P equals VI. So we have 20 over 10, which turns into 2 amps. Remember that 1 watt per 1 volt equals 1 amp. Part B. A different resistor has a resistance of 50 ohms and radiates 12.5 watts. What current flows through the resistor? Now in this case we can't use the same equation as we did here because this time we don't know the voltage across it. right? So instead we use a different equation. P equals I squared R. Rearranging we have I squared equals P on R. P equals 12.5, R equals 50. This gives us an answer of 0 0.25 square amperes. Now, because our answer is in square amperes, we haven't actually discovered the current yet. We found I squared. The current itself will be the square root of 0 0.25 square amps, which will be, of course, 0 0.5 normal amps. Question 5. During a certain lightning strike, a current of 30 kiloamps flows between a cloud and the ground for a period of 0 0.5 milliseconds. That is, half of a thousandth of a second, or one two thousandth of a second. If the voltage between the cloud and the ground is 2 times 10 to the power of 8 volts, that is 200 million volts, find the energy carried by the bolt of lightning. So in order to figure this out, all we need to do is use one of our equations for uh, power, right? Power and energy. We have a current, we have a voltage, and that'll let us find the power of the lightning strike. P equals VI. So substituting, we have 200 million volts, times 30 kiloamps, remember a kiloamp is a thousand amps, which will give us 6 times 10 to the 12 watts, which is an absolutely incredible number of watts. Uh, well, it's a bolt of lightning, we expect it to be powerful, but how much energy does it transmit if it has this much power over this much time? Can you remember the equation that relates energy to power? It's a pretty simple one. Energy equals power times time. 
because power is the rate of flow of energy. So 6 times 10 to the 12 watts is 6 times 10 to the 12 joules per second. But we don't have a whole second, we only have a two thousandth of a second. So, substituting this in, uh, 6 times 10 to the 12 watts times 5 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds gives us an answer of 3 times 10 to the 19 joules, which is still an enormously large number. So, that's the end of the questions. In this section we've learned about the relationship between power and energy, and how to calculate the power through a resistor by th in three different ways, energy per time, voltage times current, or current squared times resistance.